Hello everyone, this is Tenguru, and welcome to a new Dark Souls 3 video. I've had a lot of people requesting that I draw some of the mini-bosses in the game, and have also had some interested in learning a bit more about my drawing process. So I thought I could kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. So for this video, I'm slowing down the drawing a bit, and we'll be discussing the process I've been developing for my drawings. I say developing because my process is constantly evolving with every drawing I make. So I want to start by prefacing this video with a little bit about me and my experience level. I've always loved to draw, and I've taken a lot of traditional drawing classes, both while in high school and a few in college. By traditional drawing, I mean uh, pencil and paper. I'm also a graphic designer by trade, and I've had training in Photoshop, which is what I use for all my drawings. All that being said, I've had no formal training in drawing digitally. This is a hobby for me. I just really enjoy drawing, and I would like to get better at it. I've taught myself everything in that regard by watching videos and reading books. There are a lot of people out there who are professionals in the industry, many of them on YouTube, who are much more knowledgeable and proficient at this process than me. But since many of you have shown interest in my methods, I will do my best to share what I've learned. So with that out of the way, let's get into the drawing. So like I said, I'm using Photoshop for my drawing software, and I'm using a Wacom bamboo tablet. I got mine for around $80, and I've had it for probably 8 years or so. It's nothing fancy, but it works great and it gets the job done. Right now, I'm working on a rough sketch of my composition, and won't start working on details until a little later. It's always better to get your main composition roughed in as quickly as possible. The last thing you want to do is start putting in all this intricate detail and spend all this time on the drawing and not like your composition hours into it. You'll also notice that throughout this drawing I'm not zooming in and out all the time. In addition to making it difficult for you to watch, I again, you know, don't want to get caught up in the little details. It's the same as if you were drawing on pencil and paper. You don't want to have your face a couple inches away from your paper while you draw because it can really skew the way your composition turns out. Once you have it laid out, add in some highlights and shading to the point where your drawing has really started to take shape. I would say then it's okay to maybe start zooming in and really working on the finer details. So for those of you who don't have a lot of experience with composition layout and feel like your drawings are coming out a little flat, I have a tip for you. Try giving your drawing a foreground, middle ground, and background. Or in other words, something in the front, something in the middle, and something in the back. In this case, my character will be in the foreground, and the stray demon will be in the middle ground. The character will be a little larger than he would be if he was standing side by side with the demon, because he is closer to the viewer. You can see on the right that my drawing has three layers to it. My white background, the stray demon, and my character make up the three layers. You don't really need to have the boss and the characters on separate layers, but it does make it a little faster for me if I'm tweaking the positions this way. So now that I have my rough sketch where I want it, I've added a gradient to the background. I like to use this to choose a few colors that I want to have in my palette for the drawing and also, in this case, I'm using it to help plan my light source. Once that's done, I'll make some new layers and go in with solid to fill in the shape of my boss and my character. I usually find a mid-tone to start with works best. Some people prefer to go in lighter and work their way down, some dark and work their way up. I would say there's no right or wrong, you know, whatever works best for you. With mid-tone, it's easy for me to see my sketch, and it shows up nicely for people watching. I'm drawing the drang set with the drang hammers for our weapons. Since you can actually break the legs off the boss, I thought it'd be fun to have our character smashing through one of them. I like these weapons a lot too, but they are a little tricky to draw. You know, I had some issues making them not look like maracas, so it's just important to get the shape of those right. So now that my basic colors are filled in, I started adding in some basic shading just trying to really define the shapes of the boss. Once I have that set, I'm going to use a, a texture brush that I have that's going to give the drawing a little grit to work off of. I'm not trying to be precise with the placement of these, and it, you know, and a lot of this is just going to be, it's really rough at this point. It's just gonna give me some lines to work with as I kind of flesh out the rock shape. So I'll be kind of going over them a bit, maybe picking and choosing a couple of the lines that I think really work I'll start picking out a couple of lines, and after a while it'll really start to look like rocks. Um, if you're interested in these brushes, I think these ones, I've, I've downloaded them from DeviantArt. I can put a link in the description for them if you want to try them out. There's a bunch of different rocks and brick textures. I kind of use them for just, uh, mostly for backgrounds. I 
just get some quick detail in so I'm not getting hung up on the backgrounds too much. But in this case, it also helps me add in some quick detail onto the boss, so I'm not spending all this time picking out these tiny little details on rocks. Um, just gets the drawing moving along faster, and I can spend more time on the fun stuff. So now that I have the texture in, I've turned off some of the blending options. I'm just going in and really getting in some hard shadows. These lines will really help me start to define the shape. And, you know, again, I'm still being really rough with these. You know, it's n I'm not trying to match every little detail on the boss. Using some of the lines from the texture and just really getting in a rough shape. You know, this is really going to be about adding layers and layers. You know, it's not going to be... I don't start, like, one area and just start going and flushing out all the tiny details. It's really about building layers and layers and layers instead of getting it all done at once. I find that it's just faster working this way, and also your drawing just starts to shape, take shape a lot faster. I think a lot of using doing it this way is part of working in the industry that I do. You want to create something that's as recognizable as possible, as, as quickly as possible, and then once you have something to work with, then you can really start picking out the little details. This way, it makes it easier if you have deadlines or uh, you're trying to get some approval to see if uh, you're going in the right direction for the design that you're creating. Um, so it's important to get the key information there as fast as possible, and then so you can show it to someone and they can understand what it is. Um, so that's how I like to work in drawings and, you know, if I'm working in anything else as well, creatively. So once I have that all the black roughed in, started adding in some highlights, and I'm really just kind of following along the lines that I've created with the black and really it's going to be just kind of picking out some of the highlights just going along those edges and it just helps to add a little three-dimensionality to it and I'll be going back and forth between shading and highlight shading and highlight until eventually it really starts to get to a place where I'm comfortable with it for certain subject matters like armor sets in the game you know, you can, you're really going to want to be precise in a lot of your details but for something like this it's important to not get hung up I'm picking out all the exact details because you'll be here working on it forever and it's honestly it's just not fun picking out every little detail of all these rocks so it's important to make sure that you're actually having fun doing the drawing but as you can see with all this back and forth it's really starting to look a lot more like a boss the stones are kinda starting to pop a little bit more I'll probably go I'll be going back and forth a bit with some more shading and highlights and in this stage you know, I'm really keeping things pretty monotone. You can tell a direction of where there's some shadows being cast, and there's a direction of where the sun is coming from, but, you know, I'm keeping things really monotone. I like to go in at the very end. Once I have everything put in, I'll use an overlay layer to really add in the uh, any color from, some warmth from the sun, instead of really doing it at this point in the game. It's just, that's the way I like to do it. It's a little easier. And you can see that I'm trying to focus on key areas to do all my detailing instead of really trying to detail the whole thing, so I'm spending a lot of time on the face. It's got a lot more detail, and then I'm really trying to make sure that I'm defining all of the important areas. So the arm and the hand are really going to pop a lot more as they're a lot lighter, and just making sure that those are really well defined. But, you know, I don't need to, you know, every single rock on his body doesn't need to be defined like that. Doing some level adjustments just to make sure there's a lot of contrast, making those the darks darker and the lights a lot brighter. And then I'm using just another brush to kind of add in a little more texture, a little roughness to it. Other than the uh, brick brushes that I was using, everything else is a default Photoshop brush. I'm not using anything super fancy. I just like the brick ones to give a little texture to the backgrounds, or in this case, to the uh, to the boss. You know, another way you can do it is that you can find some rock textures just doing a google image search and then overlaying them on the drawing but i usually try to just you know not spend too much time pulling outside resources and try to make it work within photoshop so i feel like i have the boss in a pretty good place at this point so i'm going to start fleshing out our player character i can still go back and be tweaking the boss but a lot of that will be easier once i start to get the rest of the background in you know like i said before it's important to get all of the key information in there and then you can really start going back in and really popping everything else. I tried to keep this drawing to about two hours to, from start to finish. And with all of these drawings that I do, it would be easy to spend eight hours just really just 
making every single little detail pop, which is probably what I would be doing if I was being commissioned for this piece. If I was to do some concept art or something, I would, yeah, I would definitely take the time and really pop the details. But getting to a place where everything is recognizable first is always important. But for this format, it's really, I don't think it's necessary to spend all that time on it because otherwise I'd be getting way less videos out if I was spending eight hours on every single one as opposed to two or three hours. And I think the series would just kind of wear on me after a while if I was doing that level of detail where I'm not drawing something that's my own creation, it's someone else's, which I have fun doing, but you're spending all of that time detailing something that, you know, you haven't created. It can kind of wear on you after a while. So I'm really trying to get the right shape for the uh, drain hammers, you know, and I can make some adjustments with the lasso tool at this point, but, you know, I really want to make sure they look like weapons and not maracas. Once again, throughout this, you can see that I'm sticking to my the three layers that I have. Once I get to the end where I'm starting to draw in the backgrounds and do some lighting, and you'll see my layers kind of start to go a little crazy. But unless you were doing filters or making adjustments where you only want a portion of the drawing affected, you don't really need a ton of layers. With a couple more tweaks and a little level adjustment, the player character should be in pretty good shape. Remember, just like with the Stray Demon, I can always go back and do more detailing later on. Alright, so now I'm going to be adding in some little bit of motion lines to it, make it really start to look like our character is actually hitting um, the boss. You know, a lot of that is just getting a basic shape and doing some motion blurs. You know, a lot of what I'm going to be doing in here isn't super precise, you know, you know, when things move they blur. You want to make sure it looks like it's in motion. It's not going to be a lot of solid stuff, it'll be a lot of heavy blurs to really convey that motion. You know, I'll add in some rocks flying off, give them some slight blurs. Just really look like they're flying off from the creature. You really want to make sure that the motion is coming off of the hammer. There's no real exact science to this, and it just takes a lot of back and forth and experimenting to find what looks best. I just want to make sure that because my character is swinging from right to left, that all the motion flows that way. Make sure you have a mix of things in motion and some that look a little more static. Not all the rubble is moving at the same speed or even in the same direction. This will really help you sell the illusion of the rock smashing apart. I've also added another layer on top of the hammer to help add a little more motion to it. You're going to want to make sure that the colors from your swing mark blend in with the colors from your weapon too. This is something I'll be able to blend a little bit better later on at the end of the drawing with the overlay layer. So now that I have my character and the boss in a pretty good spot, I'm going to start getting the background in place. There's a lot of kind of guesswork for me at this point because um, I didn't draw in any sort of perspective lines. It would probably be smart to add them in, especially if you're starting off just at least some rough lines. Um, if you don't necessarily have an eye for it, it'll be hard to tell whether something is right, but you'll definitely know, you'll pick up if it's off. For me, the focus on these drawings is the, uh, you know, the boss and the character, so I can be pretty vague with the backgrounds and it still works pretty well. Things that are further in the distance are going to be a lot lighter than things that are up front. That's just how it is in real life. If you really look out on, you know, you can see for a while, you look out on the horizon that things that are way off in the distance will be a lot lighter than things that are closer up to you. So again, I'm taking, using some of those rock brushes, getting that texture in there, and then I can uh, skew it down a bit to make it look like the floor, and this saves me so much time compared to if I was actually trying to pick out all of this kind of cracked rock for the flooring. And at this point, you know, I'm still going to be adding in um, some little bits of detail, but I just pick out a few key things, and uh, I don't need to spend all of this time going from scratch. It gets me something to work with, and then I can go and add in some shadows and highlights to the rocks, maybe follow, pick out a couple key lines that I like, uh, go from there but it just makes it, it gives it a good starting point. Like I said before, you can actually pull rock textures off online, and that works really well. It's a little less uniform than using a brush. You just have to watch because sometimes when you're pulling stuff from offline, maybe desaturate it a bit because you're gonna be taking the colors that you have from there when you overlay it. So um, it's going to change. If you wanna have more you know, control over your colors, you just, you know, you have to watch yourself with that. But you know, sometimes too, that could be really helpful. So I'm using one of the uh, calligraphy brushes to kind of create some uh, some grass. Um, but you know, again, this is a, a, stock, a standard Photoshop brush. 
Um, this is nothing fancy, but uh, I can kind of use it to make it, I use it a lot for grass, you know, and I'll just add some shading into the bottom. I do a couple dark strokes and then a couple light strokes on top and it, it works pretty well. So here I'm just using the brush to create a little bit of distance between the boss and the character. I'll use the brush, I'll blur it a bit, uh, change the opacity on it, and it just really, it helps us set them apart, that one is closer and one is a little further back. My main composition is set at this point. At, from here on out, it's just adding in, you know, a lot of smaller details and really just kind of fine-tuning the drawing. So I did pull a, an image for clouds just off of Google. I usually find something that works for me a bit. I'll desaturate a little bit, blur it a little bit, but um, I'm really trying to keep the colors that I choose for the background. And I'll add some more fog to really separate the uh, objects in the distance, make them look a lot lighter. My shapes for the buildings in the back will remain very basic, but it won't be super noticeable. The heavy detail on the boss and character will help keep the viewer's eyes fixed there in the finished art. And so here I'm making an overlay layer I'm using that to help me to really brighten up certain areas where I want the sun to be hitting. And I find it's just easier doing this kind of at the end. And now I'm just taking the brush and really just, you know, doing a little more details on the boss, picking out anything that looks a little too drawn and try to make it look a little more, a little rough around the edges. So hopefully some of this was helpful for you and you get kind of an insight on my process as I do these drawings. If you'd want more like this, or there's things you liked or didn't like, or if there's certain other questions that you have, you know, please let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them, and if people do like this type of format, um, you know, maybe I'll do some more with some of the other mini-bosses in the game, and uh, I can answer some other questions there. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.